There's magic on our teardown table. I'm talking about Apple's new magic accessories. We got up close and personal with the magic keyboard, the magic mouse too, and the magic trackpad too, and found out what makes them so magical. Wanna know their secrets? Of course you do. Let's tear them down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the new magic accessories, starting with the new magic keyboard. Compared to the third generation wireless keyboard, there are some slight changes. This keyboard layout now matches that of the 2015 MacBook with its full size left and right arrow keys. And most notably, this new Magic Keyboard has slimmed down thanks to losing the battery tube found in the third generation wireless version. With no screws to be found, we pulled out our opening picks and eye opener and found out we're going to need a little extra assistance. This keyboard is sealed so tight we're going to need to get in using our Apple Watch opening tool. With the rear case finally out of our way, we set to work on digging out some components. First out is the new 793 milliamp hour lithium ion polymer battery that comes in at 3.76 volt and 2.98 watt hour. Next up, we took a look at the logic board. Notable chips on the logic board include the Broadcom Enhanced Data Rate Bluetooth 3.0 single chip solution, the ST Microelectronics ARM Cortex M3, and the NXP Charging IC. When removing the keys, we find that this keyboard uses Apple's fancy new scissor mechanism that we first saw in the 2015 MacBook. Here at iFixit, we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The Magic Keyboard scored a 3 out of 10, and here's why. The lightning port and the battery can be replaced independently of the logic board, if you can get the device open. While fragile, the keycaps are removable and replaceable. But on the downside, excessive use of strong adhesive makes it very difficult to remove the rear panel, hindering access to every internal component. And without a service manual, it is difficult to open the keyboard without damaging internal components. On to our little magical mouse. It may look the same on the outside, but this one is rechargeable. After a lot of heating, poking, and prying, we finally break open our sticky mouse and get our first look inside. With the upper casing lifted off, we get a clear look at the capacitive arrays that give the Magic Mouse its trackpad-like effect and a very large rechargeable battery. Taking a look at the logic board, we find some familiar chips. This mouse has the same Broadcom Bluetooth 3.0 single chip solution, NXP charging IC, and ST Microelectronics ARM Cortex M3 that we found in the keyboard. When we tried to remove the battery from the rear case, we were met with a lot of resistance. Not only is it wedged into its little casing, but it's also stuck down with more adhesive, as if this little guy didn't have enough glue. With the battery safely out, we're able to inspect the specs and find that this small accessory doesn't pack light. That 3.67 volt, 7.28 watt hour, 1,986 milliamp hour lithium ion cell holds about 9% more juice than the one found in the iPhone 6S. With our Magic Mouse fully disassembled, we turn our thoughts towards repairability, and the new Magic Mouse scored a 2 out of 10, and here's why. The lightning port and battery can be replaced independently of the logic board if you can get the device open. But on the downside, replacing a malfunctioning switch requires prying through intense adhesive and soldering. Excessive use of strong adhesive makes it very difficult to remove the rear panel, hindering access to every internal component. And finally, without a service manual, it's very difficult to open the mouse without damaging internal components such as the optical sensor and power switch. Last on our teardown table is the new Magic Trackpad 2. Just like the Magic Keyboard, this Magic Trackpad has ditched its AA battery tube in favor of a rechargeable battery. The Magic Trackpad 2 is sealed tight, meaning it's time for heat and prying and our Apple Watch opening tool. Upon opening it up, we realize the magic holding the trackpad together is really just oodles of tape, doing what could easily be done with screws. Adhere to the rear panel, we find a big battery. This battery is a 3.78 volt, 7.65 watt hour, 2024 milliamp hour lithium ion polymer battery. Next out is the lightning connector, which to our surprise was only held in place by a couple of screws and was easily removable. The logic board was next to come out and we've got some familiar chips. You know the ones, the Broadcom Bluetooth 3.0 single chip solution, ST Microelectronics ARM Cortex M3, and the NXP charging IC. These magic accessories have a lot in common it seems. 
Last out, we tackle the brand new Taptic Engine. Just like the Taptic Engine in both the Retina MacBook and the MacBook Pro, the new Taptic Engine should bring a similar force touch experience to the Magic Trackpad 2. What did the Magic Trackpad 2 score on our repairability scale? It got a three out of 10, and here's why. The lightning port and battery can be replaced independently of the logic board if you can get the device open. Replacing the damaged trackpad surface means cutting and reapplying the adhesive on the spring tabs. Excessive use of strong adhesive makes it very difficult to remove the rear panel, hindering access to every internal component. And finally, without a service manual, it's difficult to open the trackpad without damaging internal components such as the battery and the Taptic engine. And those are our teardowns. You can check out the complete teardowns of all three of these devices, including tons of beautiful, high quality images over at ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.